Hi, hello, here we are again, this microphone again. A couple more people have commented now and said that it's okay. I just I wish I could clip it on here though, but I bet you can't hear me when it's down here, can you? Because it's right next to my throat. So I've got to talk quite gently. Um, Someone, I, without looking, forgive me, I can't remember your name, said about my plosives were popping popping plosives so i'm going to hold it away a little bit tonight hopefully you can still hear me here no doubt as i'm reading i'll get excited and start waving it around a little bit but i'll try my hardest for you all right anyway let's have a little bit more of terry pratchett's gads gads i did it that way so my plosives didn't pop Plo plosives plosives <laughs> plosives pop not plosives plop anyway even shorn of her layers of protective clothing, Lady Sybil Ramkin was still toweringly big. Vimes knew that the barbarian Hublander folk had legends about great chain-mailed armour broad cart horse riding maidens who swooped down on battlefields and carried off dead warriors on their cropper to a glorious roistering afterlife while singing in a pleasing mezzo-soprano. Lady Ramkin would have been one of them. She would have led them. She could have carried off a battalion. When she spoke, every word was like a hearty slap on the back and clanged with the aristocratic self-assurance of the totally well-bred. The vowel sounds alone could have cut teak. Vime's ragged forebears were used to voices like that, usually from heavily armoured people on the, way of, on the back of a war charger telling them why it would be a jolly good idea don't you know, to charge the enemy and hit them for six. His legs wanted to stand to attention. Prehistoric men would have worshipped her, and in fact had amazingly managed to carve lifelike statues of her thousands of years ago. She had a mass of chestnut hair, a wig, Vimes learned later. No one who had so, who had much to do with dragons kept their own hair for, lo hair for long. What's going on? She also had a dragon on her shoulder. It had been introduced as Talon Thrust Vincent Wonderkind of Wukwem, referred to as Vinny, and seemed to be making a large contribution to the usual chem unusual chemical smell that pervaded the house. This smell permeated everything. Even the generous slice of cake she offered him tasted of it. The uh, shoulder, it looks very nice, he said, desperate to make conversation. Rubbish! said her ladyship. I'm just training him up because his shoulder sitters fetch twice the price. Fimes murmured that he had occasionally seen society ladies with small colourful dragons on their shoulders and thought it looked very, um, nice. Oh, it sounds nice, she said. I'll grant you. Then they realise it means soot burns, frizzled hair and poo all down the back. Those talons dig in too, and then they think the thing's getting too big and smelly, and next thing you know, it's either down to the Moorpork Sunshine Sanctuary for lost dragons, or the old heave-ho into the river with a rope round your neck. Poor little things. She sat down, arranging a skirt that could have made sails for a small fleet. Now then, Captain Vimes, wasn't it? Vimes was at a loss. Ramkin's long dead stared down at him from ornate frames high upon the shadowy walls. Between, around and under the portraits were the weapons they'd presumably used, and had used well and often by the look of them. Suits of armour stood in dented ranks along the walls. Quite a number, he couldn't help noticing, had large holes in them. The ceiling was a faded riot of moth-eaten banners, he did not need forensic examination to understand that Lady Ramkin's ancestors had never shirked a fight. It was amazing that she was capable of doing something so unwarlike as having a cup of tea. My forebears, she said, following his hypnotised gaze. You know, not one Ramkin in the last thousand years has died in his bed. Yes, ma'am. Saws of family pride, that. Yes, ma'am. Quite a few of them have died in other people's beds, of course. <laughs> Captain Vine's teacup rattled in its saucer. Yes, ma'am, he said. Captain is such a dashing title. I've always thought that. She gave him a bright, brittle smile. I mean, colonels and so on are always so stuffy. Majors are pompous, but one always feels somehow that there is something delightfully 
dangerous about a captain. Now, what was it you had to show me? Vimes gripped his parcel like a chastity belt. <laughs> I, I wondered, he faltered, how big swamp... Uh, he stopped. Something dreadful was happening in his lower regions. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lady Ramkin followed his gaze. <laughs> oh, take no notice of him, she said cheerfully. Hit him with a cushion if he's a bother. <laughs> a small elderly dragon had crawled out from under his chair and placed its jowly muzzle in Vive's lap. It stared up at him soulfully with big brown eyes and gently dribbled something like cor <laughs> quite corrosive by the feel of it over his knees, and it stank like the ring around an acid bath. That's Dewdrop Maybelline Talon Thrust the First, said her, said her ladyship. Champion and sire of champions. Now, He's not no fire left now, poor soppy old thing. He likes his belly rubbed. Fimes made surreptitiously vicious jerkin motions to dislodge the old dragon. It blinked mournfully at him with roomy eyes and rolled back the corner of its mouth, exposing a picket fence of soft blackened teeth. Just push him off if he's a nuisance, said Lady Ramkin cheerfully. Now then, what was it you were asking? I was wondering how big swamp dragons grow, said Fimes, trying to shift position. There was a faint growling noise. You came all the way up here to ask me that. Well, I seem to recall Gayheart Talon Thrust of Ankh stood fourteen thumbs high, toe to Matlock, mused Lady Rumpkin. Uh, oh, about three foot six, she added kindly. No bigger than that, said Vimes, hopefully. In his lap, the old dragon began to snore gently. Golly, no, he was a bit of a freak, actually. Mostly, they don't get much bigger than eight thumbs. Captain Vimes' lips moved in hurried calculation. Two feet, he ventured. Well done. That's the cobs, of course. The hens are a bit smaller. Captain Vimes wasn't going to give in. A cob would be a male dragon, he said. Only after the age of two years, said Lady Rampkin triumphantly. Up to the age of eight months, he's a pumit, then he's a cock until fourteen months, and then he's a snood. Captain Vimes sat entranced, eating the horrible cake, breeches gradually dissolving as the street stream of information flooded over him. How the males fought with flame, but in laying season only the hens breathed fire, from the combustion of complex intestinal gases to incubate the eggs which needed such a fierce temperature, while the males gathered firewood, a group of swamp dragons was a slump or an embarrassment, a female was capable of laying up to three clutches of four eggs every year, most of which were trodden on by absent-minded males, and that dragons of both sexes were vaguely uninterested in one another, and indeed everything except firewood, except for about once every two months when they became as single-minded as a buzzsaw. He was helpless to prevent himself being taken out to the kennels at, kennels at the back, outfitted from neck to ankle in leather armour faced with steel plates, and ushered into the long, low building where the whistling had come from. The temperature was terrible, but not as bad as the cocktail of smells. He staggered aimlessly from one metal line pen to another, while pear-shaped, squeaking little horrors with red eyes were introduced as Moon Penny Duchess Marchpane, who's gravid at the moment, and Moon Miss Talon Thrust II, who was best of breed at Pseudopolis last year. Jets of pale green flame played across his knees. Many of the stalls had rosettes and certificates pinned over them. And this one, I'm afraid, is Goodbye Bindle Featherstone of Quirm, said Lady Rampkin relentlessly. Vime stared groggily over the charred barrier at the small creature curled up in the middle of the floor. It bore about the same resemblance to the rest of them as Nobby did to the average human being. Something in its ancestry had given it a pair of eyebrows that were about the same size as its stubby wings, which could never have supported it in the air. Its head was the wrong shape, like an anteater. It had nostrils like jet intakes. If it ever managed to get airborne, the things would have to drag of, have the drag of twin parachutes. It was also turning on Captain Vimes the most silently intelligent look it ever had from any animal, including Corporal Nobbs. It happens, said Lady Rampkin sadly. It's all down to the genes, you know. Is it? said Vimes. Somehow the creature seemed to be concentrating all the power its siblings wasted in flame and noise into a stare like a thermic lance. He couldn't help remembering how much he'd wanted a puppy when he was a little boy. 
Mind you, they'd been starving. Anything with meat on it would have done. He heard the dragon lady say, One tries to be breed for a good flame, depth of scale, correct colour, and so on. One just has to put up with the occasional total whittle. The little dragon turned on Vimes, a gaze that would be guaranteed to win it the award for dragon the judges would most like to take home and use as a portable gas lighter. Total whittle, Vimes thought. He wasn't sure of the precise meaning of the word, but he could hazard a shrewd guess. It sounded like whatever it was you had left when you extracted everything of any value whatsoever. Like the watch, he thought. Total whittles, every one of them. And just like him, it was a saga of his life. That's nature for you, said her ladyship. Of course, I wouldn't dream of breeding from him, but you wouldn't be able to anyway. Why not, said Fimes. Because dragons have to mate in the air, and he'll never be able to fly with those wings, I'm afraid. I'll be sorry to lose the bloodline, naturally. His sire was Brenda Rodley's tree bite bright scale. Do you know Brenda? Um, no, said Fimes. Lady Ramkin was one of those people who assumed that everyone else knew everyone else knew. Hang on, let me read that again. Who assumed that everyone else knew everyone else one knew? <laughs> Charming girl. Anyway, his brothers and sisters are shaping up very well. Poor little thing, thought Vimes. That's nature for you in a nutshell. Always dealing off the bottom of the pack. No wonder they call her a mother. You said you had something to show me, Lady Rampkin prompted. Vimes wordlessly handed her the parcel. She slipped off her heavy mittens and unwrapped it. Plaster cast of a footprint, she said, baldly. Well, does it remind you of anything? said Vimes. Could be a wading bird. Oh, Vimes said crestfallen. Lady Rampkin laughed. <laughs> or a really big dragon. Got it out of the museum, did you? No, I got it off the street this morning. Ah, someone's been playing tricks on you, old chap. Uh, there was um, circumstantial evidence, he told her. She stared at him. Draco Nobilis, she said hoarsely. Pardon? said Vimes. Draco Nobilis, the noble dragon, uh, as opposed to these fellows. She waved a hand in the direction of the massed ranks of whistling lizards. Draco Vulgaris, you know, that's the lot of them. But the big ones are all gone. This really is a nonsense. No two ways about it. All gone. Beautiful things they were. Weighed tens. Biggest things ever to fly. No one knows how they did it. And then they realised. It was suddenly very quiet. All along the rows of kennels, the dragons were silent, bright-eyed and watchful. They were all staring. At the roof. <gasps> what are they doing? What are they doing? Oh my goodness. Do you think the big dragon is kind of summoning them? Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, thanks very much for listening. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Unless you're here for a little bit of, of cheer chatter. Oh gosh, I'm like, this is, I have to be really gentle with this. I had a thought whilst I was reading that. Yeah, I, I think whilst I'm reading, look at me go. What about if I put it, if I wear a t-shirt and I put it like right up here? Obviously I ain't gonna, get, I'm not gonna be able to hear it. I hope it's still green. And it's still turned on. <laughs> yeah, still green. I'm gonna be able to hear it, you are. But does this sound all right? I don't know. I like to gesticulate as I'm reading. Whoa, like a cool dude. But um, I can't when I'm holding this so close to my mouth. I don't know. I don't know. I need a better solution. Really do. Um, Melanie, thanks very much for saying that my hair was fire yesterday. You'll see that my hair is not fire today. Look, at, <laughs> That's why this is on today. We can't be doing that too. And person who said um that uh hang on i, can, I can't do this this at the same time i can think whilst i'm reading but i can't look at comments on youtube whilst i'm recording <laughs> hang on let me find out what person who said said uh mil milk milk x that's who it was um so yeah 
said that um, about using a plush filter because um, my plosifs were popping. Using a Lavalier muff works. What are you talking about? <laughs> Good grief. Um, thanks for the neat content. It's very kind of you. Thank you for the neat comment. Um, although, Milk X, that first little bit up there, I do you know what? Because you said that I looked like if Travis and Jamie had a baby, I would be that baby. I did actually Google Travis and Jamie. And anyone wondering, Travis McElroy, never never heard of him before, but I Googled him. And then Jamie from Sorted Food. Look at them two and imagine their baby. And apparently, Will Gex says that's me. <laughs> they're, they're quite big bone chaps there, mate, aren't they? Hey? What are you saying? Look, look at that trim. Trim, <laughs> trim I tell you. Cool. I know it's been Christmas and all, and I've put on a couple of pounds. Anyway, thanks for your very helpful comment, Milk X. Nice to meet you as well. I don't think you've ever commented before, have you? So um, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit Love Heart right now. Ready? Did you get that? <laughs> um, And then Melanie, yep, she said that the mic closer to your face does make your voice better and your speech clearer. I wonder if you attached it to the headset. Hmm. I could do, I suppose. But then, because I used to wear that headset so much, it made my ears hot. <laughs> Which is stupid, isn't it? But um, what about if I put the, <laughs> I could put the headset around my neck and put it up here somewhere? It's an idea. Melanie, here I come. Love heart that comment. Did you feel that? Did you feel that? Bzz, on your phone. Uh, now, Nina Lux, is, because I, I get comments. Look, all these comments here. They're on all of my videos. Like, for example, currently, there's a guy called Darkfang25 going through all of my Mr. Monday chapters. And it was a while ago I recorded Mr. Monday, wasn't it? That was a long old time ago, probably even at the start of 2023, maybe even 2022. But he's, or she, never assume Mr. S, is very helpfully going through each one right in a time when the story starts. <laughs> So, like, if you've commented, it's probably got lost amongst Dark Fan. I don't want to like and love heart them ones, but you have to do something to them to get rid of them off your list. Thanks, Dark Fang. Uh, well, look, here's Melanie. What's she saying up here? I especially like the droll carrot librarian conversation. And there it is. Hair is looking fire today, Mr. S. Thanks, Melanie. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Um, yeah, Nina Lux, she's she's on I Shall Wear Midnight at the moment, so she won't hear this for a while. Uh, oh, she's just said, keep going, we love you and we love your chatting. That must have been that time when someone said, don't talk so much. Do you remember that? Oh, bad days, bad days. Um, Laura Bohen, she said, uh, sound was much better tonight. Gentle, but clear. Kind of like that, Laura Bohen. Um Time Traveller, she's loving the old Nicolas Cage movies and likes Family Man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Been grey and stormy where she is and didn't also do very much yesterday. Well, there you go. Hang on, let me just refresh that. Now I've done lots of love hearts. There we are. Yeah, we're back to back to that guy. <laughs> oh, or girl. I don't know. Never see Mr. S. He's just doing times. I'll stop it there. All right. Okay. Uh, so today, let's think. Um, Blake and Phoebe, they've now gone back to their mums. So, although I think they're only going back to their mums for a short time, because like I said, it's Floyd's birthday on, on the first. So normally what happens, Blake and Phoebe spend Christmas Eve with their mum. And then they come to me like for the end of Christmas day and Boxing Day really is our Christmas day, you see. So, um, they kind of come to me for New Year's Eve and we, we play board games, do that sort of thing. Um, just have a little bit of a giggle till midnight and then we go, hmm, night then <laughs> and go to bed. And then of course we have to wake up super early for Floyd's birthday. So, um, so yeah, they're only going to go to their mums for a little while. Uh, what else has happened today? Um, oh, so, you know, I had that telescope this morning when I got up, I always, I'm a very early riser and, um, the moon was quite blasting out there. It like. 
by the time I'd go outside, the sun had come up as well. But you know those times when the sun's up and the moon's up? It was one of those. So, um, yeah, the moon was just mega bright, but in a blue sky, which is kind of nice. So, uh, yeah, did some telescoping this morning. And I think it's quite clear tonight. So as soon as I've finished talking to you guys, I'm going to put my clothes on. I'm not going to go on a t-shirt. And I'm going to go and have another look tonight as well. Hopefully it won't be raining tonight. Uh anything else I've done today. I've I've been trying today to think of New Year's resolutions, right? And I did write them down for this uh for the purpose of this. Let's have a look. Um I want to lose weight. I want to get fit. I want to learn a talent like something musical. You saw my musical talents. Drawing, I'm a terrible drawer, but I I could have a go at learning cooking. Now, yeah, I know some of you have said about the old cooking that I do on here. I might start doing some of those in 2024. I want to read more, not just for this channel, but just like on my own as well. Um, I do, I've found recently because I've got, I downloaded a couple of games on my phone and I just sit there because especially at the end of a school term, because you get home and your brain's so exhausted. I just sit there like, oh, like a zombie playing games on my phone so I, I kind of want to stop doing that really I need to stop doing that um I want to drink a bit more water I'm terrible at drinking water tea and coffee is my thing and maybe a whiskey as well but um yeah I want to drink a lot more water um uh yeah and I want some more house plants <laughs> there you go that's they're they're the things that I I really want for two thousand and twenty four. So um, big bang just outside the door there. I don't know who that was. I'll find out in a minute. I better go. Oh my goodness! All right, okay. I'll see you all tomorrow. Night.